Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm Hua Xiu. So thanks for the invitation. Uh, today I'd like to present our some ex uh, maybe some works, uh, some recent works about improving generalization in low resource molecule modeling through organization and augmentation. So I'm maybe more like a, an algorithm person. So I may have some algorithms and uh, with half algorithm and half molecule applications. Uh, so we can see that in drug discovery is uh, now is very popular in the maybe in the uh, chemical or biology field in the traditional drug discovery. So we have a large, uh, like maybe unseen data of compounds, and we have a drug bank and with a lot of compounds, and then we can do some like uh, involved screening, and it can get some like uh, candidates or drug components. And then we can do the admit optimization and the, to filter out some uh, the best drug candidates. So it's accurate, uh, but sometimes it's expensive and time consuming. Uh, uh, based on the machine learning, so we can try to speed up the progress and uh, we involve the virtual screening and in the virtual screening, we can like uh, I'll try to first filter out a lot of drug compounds and then we can do the in vivo screening. So it is fast and it is also cheap. And in this talk, I will majorly focus on the visual screening or admit optimization. In the we here, we will formulate the visual screening as a regression problem, uh, given a protein target. Uh, a target protein, and uh, maybe we have some like a drug component, a small component, and we will find, try to find their affinity, uh, the activities. And uh, in these cases, we will try to uh, model this activity as a, uh, we will formulate the activity as a continuous values and uh, to formulate it as a regression problem. And we also will, uh, discuss about admit optimization, for example, like toxic optimization, and we will try to uh, evaluate if it is toxic or not. Toxic or not. So uh, in these cases, it will formulate as a classification problems. However, due to the high cost or like uh, maybe significant of time consuming request by the in which uh, in which you invite experiments. So it is challenging to collect a sufficient label data, and maybe for a new assay. Uh, uh, fortunately, we have a lot of historical assays. So in these historical assays, uh, maybe for different target protein, and we can leverage these kinds of information and to benefit our learning process of the new target protein. So this question would be uh, how to accommodate widely varying assays for distinct proteins and to maybe store them in a, maybe in a parameter and then we can fine tune them in the target protein. So one promising way would be using meta-learning to do that. Uh, in the meta-learning, we focus on, we have maybe, we have a lot of tasks. So for example, in previous examples, we can, use like each drug assays could look at it as one task. And then in all tasks, and we maybe learn a global prayer from this task, maybe different kinds of tasks. And this global prayer could be used to benefit the learning of the new task. So here is one question, what can be a global prayer? Um, I will provide one example is, sorry. So, yeah. Yeah, I will provide an example about gradient-based method. Uh, in the memo, it's called, which is called the model agonistic meta-learning. So we will have a one machine learning model F with the initial parameter zero. And uh, the goal for memo is try to find a better model initial parameters. Uh, so for example, here we can see if we random start and have random initialized models, and it takes maybe a long way to get the best parameter of, for each task that is for each task T1, T2, and T3. However, if we can find maybe a very close, uh, better global prayer here, it's like uh, uh, the red point, and it will, can, we can quickly get the parameter, the best parameter of each task. So after by using one 
data set called a support set to do the adaptation. Um, we will also like try to uh, maybe uh, sketch the like meta learning frameworks. So assume we want to optimize theta zero, we will define some uh, notations and this is like called the meta training. In the meta training uh, procedure, we have a lot of tasks. Here we have, have task one to task I, and we will use a support set uh, so DIS may be called support set and to optimize the theta zero and get the uh, maybe the optimal parameter for each task. And then we, we will use another data set from this task, so, so called the query set. And this query set is, can be used to optimize the theta zero in this procedure. And this is meta training process. And then we will try to use the lambda uh, initialization, the theta zero, and to uh, be adapted in the meta testing process. So we have a new task, and for example, in the new uh, drug assay, and with a, a few molecules, and then we will use this a few molecules to optimize the theta zero to be a very bad, a few gradient steps, and get the parameter theta t, and we will finally evaluate and report the problem in the query set of task t. So, so we can also see some challenges in the literature. So in the literature, we learn a global prayer from a lot of tasks. So in an ideal scenario, so these tasks are maybe, uh, maybe homogeneous, or maybe for example, here we have a lot of tasks from the uh, maybe a sports tasks. So we use this task and learn a global prayer and can benefit the can generalize well to the new task with a few trials. However, in the real world scenario, we can see this task for maybe versatile, and then here we can tense maybe sports tasks, some language tasks, also some logic tasks. Or if we still use a global prayer, we will find some tasks might not use for and cannot generate well to the new task. And um, see another scenario is that if we only have a few tasks, so it can also generalize maybe due to the memorization. So the learned models will memorize to the previous tasks, I mean, to the source tasks. So it cannot generalize well to the new task. So here I provide two principles or two tools to tackle these two challenges. Uh, the first one is organization. So in the organization, our goal is to structure the learned knowledge. For example, here we have different set of uh, tasks, and we want to maybe group it to to uh, uh logic tasks, sports tasks, and different language tasks. The other one is we want to do some augmentation and try to bring more knowledge from existing tasks. Um, um, uh, after using this augmentation, we can increase the number of tasks, and then it can help us to improve the generation of meta learning. Then in the next, we will use two examples to show how to apply the organization and the uh, augmentation in the uh, low, so uh, low resource molecule modeling. So let's recap the principle of organization. So in our human intelligence, we can not only transfer our learned knowledge from past experience, we can also structure the learned knowledge. Uh, for example, here, we after we structuring this learned knowledge, we have the new task, and this new task could easily find the most similar tasks uh, in, in this uh, task pool, and uh, maybe the sports task, and these tasks can uh, benefit, can get, can give more benefits to the learning process of the new task. So in drug discovery, we can see that the principal organizations, here we should tend different randomly select assays in this data set, in our data set, which want to predict the drug activities. So we can see there are a large discrepancy between the distributions of activities. For example, uh, some like drug, uh, some assays, a wide range of the activity. Some may be the narrow range. So uh, we can see maybe different kinds of assays, different kinds of uh, 
uh, model initializations. And we four will formulate it as like a task structure exploration, exploitation problems. We aim to structure, represent, and leverage the knowledge from data. Assume we have a support set which contains maybe one essay, I, and it has support set containing a few JAR components. We will first do the task representation, try to aggregate samples and represent of the whole essay and get the essay representative. Mm, then we will try to uh, explore some structures uh, G and use the task representative T to interact with this structure D. After that, we will use the, maybe uh, we will, after interaction and we will get some task specific knowledge and also interact from the previous knowledge and we will use it to customize as a prior knowledge and get the task specific model initialization or task specific meta knowledge theta zero i. And the key point is how to explore the task structure and customize the prior. In this paper, we adopt the localization structure. So the question is still be how to accommodate widely varying assays from distinct proteins. Uh, so maybe there are one question. Uh, uh, does a component have a quantity? In, I think in our experiments, we cannot assume this. So each component only have a specific values for the same assay. Yeah, so our solution, yeah, I will continue. So our solution is we want to dissect the whole structure and uh, combining with the localization strat strategy. Oh, uh, we here after this, it would be a base learner and the machine learning model F with parameter theta. And we will first dissect the whole network to different kinds of like functional regions. So here we can see uh, the first layer would be dissected to three functional regions, uh, theta, uh, one, uh, theta zero one and theta zero two and theta zero three one. And uh, similarly, the uh, second layer will also be dissected to uh, three different kinds of uh, functional regions. Mm, we will then try to find our best way for a specific assay. So, uh, for example, in here, for the here, we choose the essay. I maybe select the input and then select the first functional region as theta 0, 1, 1. And then select the second uh, functional region in the second layer. And then select the third one in the third layer and finally get the output. So according to this one, we will use this selected initialization uh, and do a few greater steps on the uh, support set and finally evaluate the performance on the query set and guess the loss for query. So we can see this lo lo localization, pro uh, yeah, how to get this localization. Hello. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I see. Why it, uh, you don't have, you only have one um, local, uh, functional region at the last layer oh this is for the output layer so it's the uh, only one okay yes okay. yeah okay yeah oh uh, there another question how do you enforce? oh we will uh manually like uh dissect this uh maybe for each layer we will get a few functional regions and then combining them and the two combine the output of them and to get the second layers uh so the so independence would depends on the uh, I say representations. So we will discuss later. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, in these cases, the localization are determined by a localization network with essay representation. So the so question would be how to get the essay representation. So here we will do the contrastive ways, learn a contra use the contrastive learning to learn the essay representation. We aim to represent each essay by aggregating its support samples. 
Let's see if there are aggregate process would be we try to aggregate uh, essays with some embedding functions, maybe embedding the its features as well as some combining with the labels and using another uh, embedding function and the combining all the aggregating all the support samples. So to use congestion to learn the embedding functions, we will try to find some positive and the negative pairs, uh, similarly as the contrast learning in the supervised learning. And here we will see that in the right figure, there are two essays, essay one and essay two, and then we will uh, sample two batches from essay one. And then in the batch one, we can get the representation and also the batch two can get the representation two. We will treat the representation one and the representation two are positive pairs because they are from the same essay. And in the representation three, it is from a different essay. So we will treat the representation three as negative pairs. But by, after selecting some positive pairs and the negative pairs, we will uh, we can use some contrasting learn loss and uh, to uh, learn the uh, representation function or in the embedding functions. Then we can feed all samples in each essay, all the support samples of each essay and into these more uh, embedding functions and get the essay representation. So this is our ways to, hello? Yes, hello. Sorry, I had a very quick question. How are you defining assay when pulling from public data sets? Is this like one wet lab assay or one set of conditions? Oh, we can't use some the assays or uh, so each essay is represented like one experimental trials. Yeah, and for one kind of protein. Okay, great. Thank you. So it's aggregated across multiple groups yeah, or yeah, the yeah. same group? Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, I see one question in chat. Yeah, we did not, uh, we currently did not use any biological knowledge and uh, in this essay representation. So it is what's wise to use this knowledge. And uh, so it might be a great feature so, direction. I have a question. So a protein can have multiple assays. If you're looking for public data, you know, like Campbell or PubChem. So how did you define that particular protein for that assay? I mean, on what basis? Um, Your protein kind of multiple assays. Which assays are you talking about here? It means from the biological perspective, if you see, it's very hard to actually extract the correct information from which protein, uh, you know, this assay is involved with. Like there are several. So if I'm understanding I see, correct, uh, this is how, how do you actually identify that? And which assay specific type you actually extracted? Um, I think uh, my collaborators uh, provide these data sets for me. So it seems like they have crowded these assays from a public data set. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Do you have collaborators who provided you the name and the answer. Yes. Yes. All yes. Right. Yes. So yes. That's France a very Biology challenging domain. task, actually. Yeah. 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 From the biology domains, and they provide me the information of assays, and maybe they group it. But I, could they just claw it, claw it from the public website? Yeah. Okay. If we, I will continue. So after we learn the task representations uh, or essay representation, and the, we will feed into the region localization network. Here we provide two criteria to design the localization network. So first we we'll want to make it like high representational capacity. And the another one we will try to uh, make it consistency with the hierarchical structure, maybe behind the functional regions. So as a, a layer two and is uh, close to the layer one. Mm. Uh, sorry, so I see one question. Uh, yeah, I think it might be, uh, it may could be learned the, with the conditional computational strategy. Uh, yeah, it might be a, an interesting feature questions. So, but currently we uh, design some, manually design some models and to find these relations. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, in, 
Yeah, and the thing in these cases, so we will have the localization, uh, regional localization networks. We here we adopt one, uh, one recurrent structure, and uh, then feed into the as representation T, and as the output will be decided the localization probabilities to select which assay we want, uh, which which uh, functional regions that we want. So in overall. So functional regionalized meta learning could represent it as we first use the POSSEC to get the assay representation network, use the assay representation network and to get the assay representation. And then we will use this representation to feed into uh, the regional localization network and get some properties. And these properties will guide us to localize uh, this SAI and to uh, the whole network and to find the uh, find the one pass in the whole net network, and finally we will you feed the, the support set into the base net and do a few great steps and get the best parameters and uh, optimal parameters, and finally use the query set to optimize the whole model. So the key idea is we try to differentiate the new sub networks between tasks and to share knowledge between different functional regions. Uh, we evaluate our models in two data sets, one for the drug activity prediction. So in these cases, there are more than 4,000 assays. Uh, we will have different splits for the meta training, validation, and testing. Uh, the median number of components in the support stack is 70. And we will also do it in the admit property prediction. So here we select two uh, benchmark data sets from the molecule net. Uh, we conduct two a five short classification problems. So it could be reacted as binary classification and the five training samples for each class. So it is a few short learning problems. Uh, all drug components, we have used more than 1,000 uh, Morgan figure fingerprints as features. So here we show in the drug activity prediction, we evaluate so a square between the predictive values and the actual values. A uh, compare you by using our algorithm compared with uh, if we do not use any knowledge transfer from different assays to directly use the training data of the target assay to change this model. And the fun training is that we aggregate uh, we change these models on all assays on all uh, meta training assays and then fun training these models on target assay. And anyway, it's a variant of MAMO and our models is built on annual. So it's only fine tuning the last layers. And uh, uh, so there are also some customization meta learning models. So we will find the best one and show the results here. And then we can see our models can improve the performance. Also, so maybe this is a typo. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, this slide is a typo. It's my mistake. So this is the end results of NO++. So our models also build on NO, both NO and NO++. Uh, and we only choose this NO++. NO++ is usually outperform NO. Uh, we also choose the admit property classification problems. And uh, the evaluation metric is the accuracy with the 95% uh, confidence interval. And we can see some improvements by applying our algorithm. At last, we'll do some analysis and try to visualize the assembled trace of six random selected meta testing assays. Uh, so this is built on the uh, drug activity prediction. And we also, in the right table, we also, visual, we also show some meta knowledge of different assays. So that, for example, the assay type, uh, the target, and the target group. Mm, in these cases, we can see that uh, for example, here SA A, B, A to D uh, shares the first knowledge uh, functional region. So functional region two one. I mean that one is for the input and then four is for the output. Mm. Uh, we can see that they both from the cell based functional assay. And uh, uh, in the second uh, layer, and we can see that the A and B share the first functional uh, uh, functional region, and the C and D share the second one. And they are from maybe uh, from the same target group. So this result shows that our models have some interpretability and uh, can somehow uh, somewhat 
I distinguish different kinds of essays. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Hey, those Hello. software values look very worse than a random prediction. Like, how do you plan to improve those models? Because they won't be used much in the pharmaceutical uh, domain. You know, I, I would ask, you know, like, how would you plan to improve those models? Because something like 0.3 is, is nothing, you know, and when you take a train or a test set, do you have seen uh, which region of the data it is predicting better? Is it an activity region between like low active region is predicting better and the high active region? I see, I see, I see, I see. I yeah, see. So, yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. We, we can't it in, actually did not conduct this experiment. I think this is a very important experiment and uh, uh, we can consider to conduct the experiment later. And if you are interested, maybe we can, uh, you can send me an email and uh, maybe I can later send you some results if I have oh. a, okay. to conduct the experiments. Yeah. If I could send you in quickly, um... All those results that the speaker is showing is for the specific setting is, is a five shot, two way five shot setting. So we cannot expect like very miraculous result like from scene 10 example. So all need to be contextualized and that setting. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, I may continue. So a few takeaways. So in the organization principle, and we present so how to first represent each task or each essay. And then we will try to structure uh, the knowledge and explore or interact with the uh, whole structure. And we will try to use localization strategy to guide the prayer. And the essay representation plus the knowledge, uh, network localization, and we can achieve better meta generation for the set of tasks. So, Uh, yeah, I think there are discrete tools for the optimization uh, problem. So here we directly apply the, uh, some discrete strategies and uh, use hard selection and to select the function origins. So based on the softmax uh, output. Yeah, and then in the second part, we will discuss the augmentation. So in this augmentation, we'll try to recognize the metalinear algorithms. So before we start the augmentation, let's first take a deep look in the meta of fitting. So all, I think all of us know the data of fitting. So assuming we want to use, a, we given a few uh, points and we want to use our functions. Oh, let's see, Fun our functions to uh, fit these data samples. And uh, an ideal case is we have these functions, but if the model is overfit and it may not generalize well to the testing data. Uh, similarly, we still have some task of fitting in the meta linear problems. I, think, I assume there are maybe three essays. Uh, sorry, so it seems like someone raised a hand. Hello? Uh, yes, I have a problem. And, and just now you said that you use, uh, you, you get the every representation. Have you tried to just uh, use uh, the uh, pre-trained protein embedding or molecule embedding from millions of uh, uh, molecules pre-trained on this? Uh, I think this, uh, the pre-trained embedding on millions of molecules or proteins may contain more useful information. Have you tried this? Uh, yeah, we, we currently did not try this, but I think maybe integrate this information could get the better task reputation. Or yeah, as yeah. yeah, yeah, this can even benefit the whole model. I see, okay, thank okay. you. Thanks for the question. Yeah, in the task of fitting, uh, we as models may uh, overfit to maybe a few, especially if we only have a few different essays may Overfit to the CC assays and cannot generalize well to the new assay. So here we will try to use the meta generation to define this kinds of generation. So we want to generalize from the uh, all the so meta training 
assays and to join as well to the testing assay. Here we will discuss two kinds of two types of meta overfitting. One is called the learner overfitting. It's a learner overfitting is a very typical overfitting scenarios and uh, all some learned models is overfitted to all meta training tasks and cannot generalize well to the meta testing task. So another kind of overfitting is like memorization of fittings in the meta learning. So in the memorization of fitting is that we learn a uh, initialization theta zero from all the meta training tasks. And then we want to un make some initialization generalize well to the testing task. However, in the generation process, the support set is not able to help the inference process. So it seems like to formulate it, the support uh, strategy problems do not rely on the support set for the inner loop adaptation. So we can see given the theta zero, the model initialization, learned from the source tasks, and the given the feature of uh, the, the, the queries, the feature of a query set in the SAI. And we will find some mutual information between the support set and the inference process is equal to zero. So in these cases, the support set will, cannot affect the inference process. And in this work, we will discuss, we will try to actively involve more data in the inference process and to improve the meta generation ability. Oh, before we start our model, we first discuss two simple solutions. As the most straightforward solutions is we can simply combine the support and the query set for the Outlook updates and to do the augmentation. However, we found the support set cannot contribute to the Outlook optimization process uh, since after doing a few in the loop gradient uh, steps, and we found the support set do not can contribute to the initialization anymore. So because the gradient norm is almost zero. And so another solution is we try to add some label shifts. If we add some label shifts, we can find that uh, this label shift is we add the same noise on both support and the query set. Here we can see there are, see it can directly increase the uncertainty for the inference because given a um, uh, support set X, so you definitely need this new support set to do the inference uh, because uh, each Y uh, for a specific X feature. So it may point to two kinds of values, maybe Y and the Y plus Epsilon. So it can increase the uncertainty for the inference and reduce the effect of memorization or fitting. However, learning the constant is very easy. So it is as easy as like we will try to modify its bias. And the little extra knowledge is introduced to change the initialization. So here we formulate it as given the query set and we, we have the augmented query set. And this augmented query set does not help the uh, learning of the model initialization. So the mutual information is equal to zero. And based on this, we will try to think how to design the new augmentation strategy. Assume the augmentation function is G. We here follow two criteria to design the augmentation strategy. So the first criteria is we want to address the memorization of fitting. And to make the models uh, relies more on the support set to do the adaptation. So we here we have added some functions on both uh, feature and the labels. Oh, and as a support set, and we can see after we adding it, we try to increase the mutual information uh, between the augmented support set and the inference process. And the criteria two is we want to adjust the learner overfitting. Uh, to adjust the learner overfitting, we want the, uh, the augmented query set can provide more information to optimize the model initialization. Based on these two criteria, we 
motivated by the mix-up would propose a very simple algorithm called MetaMix. In the MetaMix, we try to mix up the support set and the query set for outloop optimization. Here we will show one manifold mix up is that we mix up at a layer L. And uh, this is the input for the layer L for XIS and X, uh, F, F theta L XIS and F theta L XIQ. And we do the mix up by combining both sections as a hidden representations and its corresponding labels. We will use these mixed representations and mixed labels to replace uh, so original ones in the outloop loss function and to optimize the theta zero. <coughs> One oh, hello? So in a test time, you don't have access to the query set. So how how do you do the miss of them? Uh, let's say I have, you have trained your meta learning model and everything, then I come up with a new protein, with a new data set. And yeah. I want, to use your model, how do you how do you handle that? Uh, I see. So uh, maybe I can clarify your question. So you ask uh, in the testing time we do not have the query set. So how do you do miss that? Is it correct? Hello. I think you may mute. Hello. Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, we did not apply this process in the uh, in the testing time. We only do it in the training time. So in the training time, after you, if we use a query set to optimize the whole model, I mean whole model initialization. So we will use mixed query set to optimize the model initialization. So yeah. during um, test time, you don't do augmentation. Um, yeah, we do not do augmentation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I said uh, we can find that mix mix can uh, obey these two criteria, and it is very simple, and it can also integrate many meta learning algorithms. Let's see some empirical results. Uh, we here we def define four types of essay groupings: grouping one to two, so it to correspond to different kinds of uh, split strings. And we also use mean arc square to evaluate the performance. You can see after applies the metamix, it can significantly improve the performance uh, and improve, uh, improve the gen meta generation. And uh, both the weight decay and the meta dropout, meta regulation and TAMO are positively imposed some regulations. Uh, and the label, label shift is we discussed before to add one, uh, one small noise on the labels on both support and the query set. So we can also show some compatibility on these models by applying MetaMix uh, to annual, to MetaHD and to TNS. Both of them are, are representative meta learning methods. And we see that uh, this uh, applying MetaMix on these methods can second, also significantly improve their performance. And we further uh, discuss a little bit about meta overfitting. Here we show four kinds of lines. The pre-update meta training, so is that the performance of like a pre-update. So we do not do any uh, adaptation. So we directly use the model initialization to evaluate uh, the performance of the meta training. And we also combine some post update meta chain. So we use adapted models to evaluate the performance and similarly to pre-update meta testing and the post update meta testing. And this is the results of annual and this is the results by applying meta mix. So we, we have found that there are a large gap between pre-update and the post update testing models. So it seems like the support set uh, can work better. So can benefit more in the inference process. Uh, because it caused a la larger gap. Uh, we also analyze the learner overfitting. In the learner overfitting, we will compare the first thing we will compare the uh, pre updated meta training. So, in the pre updated meta training, in the annual, uh, so we have maybe high mean, uh, mean of R square, high performance. And by applying meta mix, 
we can find so we it has a low performance so it this is what we expect because it has a it shows that the models are less overfit but in the testing time we can get a better performance so it improves the meta generation so we can we observe that metamix can uh can help both a memorization of fitting and the learner of fitting. Uh, we further provide a few a theoretical analysis and to show that Metamix uh, do lead to better generation. Uh, here we will formulate Metamix finally is uh, can be regarded as uh, imp imposing a quadratic regularization on the adapted models for each task. Based on this, uh, this regularization can regularize the whole models and to achieve better generation and get a tighter bound. So, so this is we also show that why Metamix can lead to better generation. A few takeaways. Also in the traditional overfitting, the models overfit on the training samples. In the meta overfitting, uh, the model can overfit to meta, test, meta training tasks. And then, or it can ignore the support set in the meta testing adaptation, as we discussed, both correspond to the uh, learner of fitting and the memorization of fitting. And the data augmentation and the task augmentation, data augmentation could the performance augmentation or each samples. In task augmentation, here we uh, conduct some task level cross set augmentation by combining the support set and the query set and try to regularize adaptive parameters. And finally, achieve a better meta generation. Oh, so maybe I missed some questions. Uh, sorry. So maybe you can remind me. So planning essays. Sorry, maybe this is a discussion or just um it's a discussion about whether um there's any benefit using only I binding I assays. See, I see, yeah, yeah, I yeah. see. Okay, so you can remind me if it's a question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is we discussed both organization and augmentation in this talk. Uh, finally, we will do some discussion. Uh, in the future works, maybe some discussions, we also try to do more organization and uh, or organization and augmentation. So if we want to try to first, we want to do some maybe computational generation. If we have a lot of tasks, I'm thinking that maybe we can extract a more complex task structures, uh, which can capture maybe uh, more kinds of like uh, relations between different kinds of tasks. And uh, for example, we will summarize the task concept and the con ta construct one, maybe task level knowledge graph. And uh, we can also do the augmentation by bringing more knowledge. So in here, we have the data and we can try to bring some domain knowledge as the questions. Uh, we will build, uh, bring some biological domain knowledge into these models, into our models and uh, try to improve the performance or try to improve how to organize different kinds of tasks. And we can also uh, maybe uh, bring the power of humans and the two, maybe the humans can also interact uh, the models and help us to build a better uh, organization models or task structures. Um, I will also discuss a little bit more about auto distribution robustness. So in most part of this talk, we discuss label adaptation. I mean, in the testing time, we definitely have one uh, essay and these essays have a few support set and this support set can be used to do the adaptation. Uh, we also try to build some auto distribution robustness models, uh, robust models. Uh, just a, a week ago, I found one data set called uh, Jug OD, a new benchmark. So it seems like they split the training and testing part and maybe based on different kinds of meta knowledge for example, the essay domains. Uh, in these cases, the training is from maybe essay zero to essay three. 
a one zero and the testing <coughs> test data uh, are from different assays. Also based on some scaffold domains like molecule size domains. Also in these cases, we want to build our models in the training set and it can generalize well, directly generalize well to the testing domain. And without using any adapt <coughs> uh, data uh, model adaptation, and we can directly evaluate auto distribution robustness. And in our previous work, we also built a very simple models uh, to, to tackle the auto distribution robustness. We have not evaluated on the new JAK OD benchmark, but we achieved very good performance on some uh, uh, on some classical benchmarks for auto distribution. And uh, our motivation is we try to learn the invariant predictors. Uh, we will make the whole models are in, um, invariant of uh, our domain environment and we directly uh, we adopt a selective augmentation strategies in these models. I will propose Lisa and the Lisa is we try to interpret samples with the same label but different domains. So because we want to make the models invariant to domain information and we the domain agnostic models will try to make the model learning process to ignore the domain information. So first, there is no explicit constraint on the internal representation of predictors. And this model is very simple. Let's show one example. Uh, this example is built on a very simple data set called colored means. So we will have two domains, one is red and the other one is green. And in each domain, we will have the labels. And in the green domain, it preferred to predict the models to their one uh, zero. And in the red domain, it preferred to predict the models on zero one because it have more training data on these two uh, labels or these two groups. So these are majority, uh, majority groups and this is a minority groups. So after we interpret samples with the same label but different domains, we can see here we're combining the red digits and with the green digits. And by combining them, even the color or domain information changes, the label is fixed. So finally, in the learning process, the models can ignore uh, the domain information. And we show these results on four data, on five data sets. Uh, for the domain shifts, as we showed in the Jagger OD. Uh, so the first four are selected from the wild benchmark. And we and the meta shift is the new benchmark. So we can see our models can significantly out or can also outperform, can consistently outperform other methods, uh, for example, other model in, uh, environment learning methods like IM, IPIM, like uh, the coral or fish. So, and without adding any constraint. So it's very simple and can easily incorporate to different kinds of algorithms. So we hope this algorithm could also help us to achieve better performance on uh, uh, Jagger OD. Yeah, and to improve the uh, robustness or in the uh, molecule modeling. So that's all, thanks. Any questions? No. Helena, you can no. just unmute yourself and speak. Perfect, thank you. Um, thank you for your talk. I, you know, I like how you were thinking about out of distribution questions. Um, the question uh, I not? have, yes, I like that. Um, but my question is more on an in distribution question, specifically with regards to Tox Twenty One and asking about natural experiments, and if you can actually test whether your um, aggregation of different data sets. Um, into useful priors um, is actually useful. So for example, have you considered using for our Tox 21, they have ER alpha luciferase and ER alpha ligand binding domain. Perhaps using the ligand binding domain as a prior for the luciferase assay and actually seeing if that goes to the, you know, the very end I of see. your model priors. And actually, you know, in using the the assay data to see whether the most useful information is actually being used. And yeah, if it gives yeah. you the biggest benefit um, in a very robust, like in a very targeted way. 
um, since I think you've shown, you know, performance on bulk, bulk sets. I see, I see. Uh, so maybe I can clarify your question. So you see that if we can find these prayers in COP or include some most useful information. And this most useful information could also help us to tackle this auto distribution problem. Yeah, so here, no, just for in distribution. So this has- Oh, this is for in distribution. Okay, I see. Yes, I think. yes. And for seeing if this um, meta learning approach actually does what you think it will do. Um, I see, so, I, yeah. so the hypothesis there is that the ER alpha with the ligand binding domain would move to the very end or your most useful meta learning tasks set and would have better performance than a meta learning task set without it. I see, I see. Uh, yeah, I see. This is what we recently think about and uh, we can potentially to identify some uh, most useful knowledge and it can also do better on the in domains. I think meta learning may potentially help, but we still need to context, conduct some experiments uh, to verify it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it can also, in some cases, it benefits out of diffusion robustness, I think. Mm -hmm. And particularly for these cellular assays, if you can show that that type of learning is happening, it might be useful to identify pathways if you're trying to look at, you know, maybe bulk um, information. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, thank you for your discussion. And, you know, I really like this. Um, I'll let other people ask questions. I have more comments, but this is okay. good. Thank you. Any other question? Hey, how long does it take to train these models? Oh, train these models? I don't think it uh, takes a long time. So usually training a more meta learning models, for example, uh, as shown in my previous experiments, it usually takes uh, uh, I think maybe less than 10 hours for a single GPU, yeah. You mean the whole data set? Yeah, all data sets. I, I think a few data sets, for example, like admit optimization in the future learning setting, we only need, I think maybe one or two hours to train this model, yeah. Um. One question is that um, many people have shown before that the, one of the main bottleneck to meta learning model is actually the number of tasks that you have seen. Um, here you focus on augmenting uh, each individual task, so to allow better yeah. generalization for the task itself. But still, the the problem that here you only have uh, five uh, four thousand different tasks. Compared to, to vision, people can have like when they do five with five shot learning, they have millions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Tasks, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Um, any any comment on that? And how how do you think this this field of AI discovery? Like we don't have millions of tasks like that, but how can we um, move toward that or find a a way of kind of leveraging what what us in this field? Oh, yeah. I think on uh, here we discuss only for the within task augmentation. So, you know, we combining both a uh, support and set, a uh, support set and a query set and to do the outloop optimization. And it might be also useful to enable some cross task augmentation. I mean, maybe we can combine task one and task two and to join some new tasks. Uh, we have a new uh, a new paper, which will be published in this IPI clear and to discuss these problems. But we did not evaluate on the drug discovery problems. So I mean, drug activity predictions. So it seems like for regression, our method is still some a little challenging. So, but for the classification, I think we can directly use our method to apply it for the manifold, uh, uh mix up or like manifold uh, augmentation and to uh, increase the number of tasks, but. I think the key challenge is also if we can try to find the more data, it might be super helpful. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? Elena, do you still have a question? Is yes, I lowered it and raised it again. <laughs> Um, have you tried this with graph molecular representations? Um, I would expect that the uh, molecular size domain would perform better using that than ECFP. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, in our data sets, we have to the, uh, in our small data set, I mean, more than 4,200 4, uh, assays, it seems like we use Morgan print features is performing similar to use graph features. Some of my folks, use graph structures and the graph neural nets and to conduct the experiments. I guess maybe in a very large data set, the graph structure can help. But anyway, we can also use our models because we only need to change uh, our models to like graph neural nets, for example. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think just specifically for the molecular size domain, you would expect to yeah, see a, yeah, exactly. a larger performance difference. Exactly. Um, thank you. And also, yeah. if you are doing regression modeling, you need not bits. I think you need the uh, the, uh, the 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 real value numbers. Like you know, uh, so something like uh, if you use moderate descriptors, which has topological indices, ETA indices, uh, Kier Hall shape indices, volume indices of the compounds, uh, those are better. Uh, I've seen. I've worked on this assay data set a lot. I so, see, I see, I uh, see, I see. And yeah, those, the one is paddle, one is uh, one is moderate, which is pretty good. And uh, it's, it's openly available. Uh, try with that and it's good. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, we, I, we can definitely try it. So it's, uh, it's very interesting to see uh, some improvements by using graph structure. 